with the newest commander release coming next week and with the excitement level for those commanders being relatively low lots of players have been asking me and commenting on my videos saying hey omniarch what about the next cavalry release right i think a lot of players expect the next commander release cycle to be cavalry commanders and cavalry as a troop type has typically been very popular because it's very effective in the open field the track record of cavalry commanders being open field meta is very good and i think a lot of the have main players are itching to get their hands on a new toy to play with so today I'm gonna try to predict what we might expect from the upcoming Cavalry release cycle if the next release is actually Cavalry and we're gonna do this based on the historical data of what we've seen in the past from commander releases but first what's going on guys cheers now before we get into this I just want to be very clear that this video is my speculation and this is all of me making estimates and guesses based on what we've seen in the past and nothing in this video is confirmed none of this is insider information this is all just what I assume to be most likely and what we could be seeing very soon also about 69 percent of you guys are not subscribed to the channel and you might think that you are so consider going down there clicking that button and dropping a like on the video because it really helps out the channel a ton okay so the first question is is the next commander release cycle actually going to be cavalry right like how do we know that cavalry would be the next commander release cycle and I think that that is pretty I think it's pretty clear based on the historical release cycle of commanders and I'm just going to pull up a quick document that I've made recently and as you can see here we do have a trend okay we do have a trend here and I think going all the way back to 2021 the beginning of 2021 when we saw um Moctezuma and Trajan come into the game that was a leadership cycle then we saw cavalry infantry archers leadership cavalry infantry archers no leadership interesting cavalry infantry oh we should see archers but instead then we got the leadership and engineering commanders then we see the archers that we expected to see here and then we see cavalry infantry archers leadership and i think cavalry is the next in line so i think that there's a very good chance that the next commander release cycle could be cavalry so if we assume the next release cycle is going to be cavalry when can we expect these commanders to come into the game well what we know already is when the newest commanders are going to be coming into the game so lapu lapu is a mightiest governor commander he's going to be coming well the mightiest governor will start in three days but it lasts for a few days as well so we're going to be getting lapu lapu about next week which means this upcoming tuesday is going to be a wheel of fortune which will likely include gonzalo de cordoba who is confirmed to be the wheel of fortune commander now if you guys didn't know Gajamata was also announced and he looks like he will be an event commander if you guys haven't taken a look at that I suspect that his event will come around the same time that we get Gonzalo and that we get Lapu Lapu we know that update 79 is already scheduled to be released on the 26th and the wheel of fortune is released on the 27th so I expect that the special event for Gajamata will probably be in this surging spring event and I wouldn't be surprised if the fishing event that we saw kind of discussed a few months ago and also teased here in this bullet point maybe Gajamata is a commander that we can unlock from the new fishing event that's totally possible I mean we see that he is an event commander he also could be part of a, maybe a bundle right you just buy a bundle you get an unlock for him it is what it is but the reason that these dates are important is because it's going to help us understand what the commander release windows are now if you guys have been paying attention to my channel for the past couple of months I've mentioned how most of the time we see a commander release between 56 and 84 days apart right 56 being usually the fastest we ever see new commanders in fact the only time that we've seen a commander faster than that was the release of Gilgamesh and Amanatore which came 42 days after Pakal and Shook which is actually insane I wasn't even really paying that close attention back then but some of these dates aren't perfectly accurate right because as you guys know the Midas Governor Commander and the Wheel of Fortune Commander they're the first day that they're unlocked isn't the exact same day but I like to just keep it all even because I, I that's just how my brain works the two commanders are released at the same time even though one of them is a couple days later but you guys get the drill okay so if we do some math here we can see what the release windows have been in the past the early release of Liu Che as part of an event kind of messes this up a little bit which is why it seems like it's so long between Herman Prime and Liu Che 100 days right but really it was about 63 64 days between the mightiest governor commanders regardless Lapu Lapu and Gonzalo de Cordoba 
Iowa are going to be coming if we expect them next week, which we already see in the Mayday's governor, then they're going to be coming at the 56 day release window, which is very fast. That is basically the fastest that we would normally see a new commander. And if we go back through the data here, there's never been a time where they've done a 56 day release window back to back, right? I don't see that at all throughout all of rise of kingdoms history going all the way back to the beginning of 2021. Of course, I realized there were commanders released before that. Right. But I don't have perfectly accurate data. And also I wasn't like a whale back then. So I wasn't collecting all that myself. So I can't even check on my own account, but I think it's fair to say that we probably won't see the next commander release cycle being cavalry in 56 days from the launch of Gonzalo and Lapu Lapu. And I would say most likely, and what is basically the average is about 70 days, right? It's usually about 70 days. That is 10 weeks in between the release of new commanders. And so if we assume that that is the case, then I think the most likely day that we would be getting our hands on these new cavalry commanders is on May 7th. That I think is the most likely again, of course, the Midas governor commander will be a couple days after that when the Midas governor is concluded. But if by some weird change of heart or change of fate, they do decide to do a 56 day release window, then the soonest we would see them would be April 23rd. And the latest we would probably see them would be on May 21st. That would assume an 84 day window, which if we look through history, we do see 84 days is a relatively common uh, release window for commanders, right? Um, sometimes we see 98, like in the, in the nineties there, we saw uh, 92 for Gorgo. Right. And again, I want to be very clear. These dates are rough estimates. So like they might be off by a day or something like that, but just to give you guys an idea, I think the beginning of may is the most likely time that we'll be seeing these new cavalry commanders. And of course, one of them will be a wheel commander. One of them will be a mightiest governor commander. And that is assuming a 70 day release window. Okay. So then your next question might be, what are the talent trees going to be? for these commanders, right? Well, we already know one of them. It's probably going to be cavalry. And are we going to be seeing a support tree commander, a skill tree commander? Are we going to see rally or garrison? Well, I'm glad you asked, because if we take a look at the data from the history, I think that we're going to be seeing one garrison commander and one open field commander. And why is that? Well, if we look at the previous commander release of Justinian and Huo, we got a rally commander and a fielding commander. And if we look before that, we got Jan Ziska with Joan of Arc Prime, which was a garrison commander and a field commander. And if we look at the release before that, we saw Bertrand and Nevsky. One was rally, one was field. And if we look before that, we saw Yadviga and Zhang Yu. One of them was garrison and one of them was rally, which kind of breaks the trend that I was going for there. But I think you guys get the point. Typically, the mightiest governor commander for any troop type will alternate between garrison rally garrison rally garrison rally and since the last commander release for cavalry was justinian as a rally commander i think this time one of them is going to be a garrison commander i think that's pretty straightforward right i, I can almost guarantee you that right like it's it seems like that's been the developer's uh intention the entire time in that trend you know if you go through here and you do the same thing for archers for example ashurbanipal was rally dito was garrison henry was rally amanatoria was garrison same sort of trend here if we look at infantry pakal was rally flavius was garrison Tarek was rally gorgo was garrison so you know we can kind of apply that same logic to the cavalry here so i think guaranteed we're going to be getting a garrison commander and most likely we're also going to be getting an open field commander which typically has the versatility talent tree which is basically garbage it doesn't do anything the only exception to that was with the zhang yu like i said before but we haven't seen that trend break in a very long time a mandatory in gilgamesh back in august of 2021 was the last time that we saw a garrison and rally come at the exact same time. So I think it's unlikely that we'll see a garrison and rally commander come again. The only exception to that would be if the developers feel like the garrison meta is just too strong right now, then they may release a garrison and rally commander at the same time to kind of like change up the meta. But again, I think the probability of that is very low, right? Very, very low. I think we'll, we will, we're almost guaranteed to be getting a open field commander and a garrison commander for the upcoming cavalry release. Okay. Then the question becomes, what can we expect from the active skills of these upcoming cavalry commanders? And this is where the data starts to fall apart a little bit, but I can give you guys my best guess. And I think if we look back at the most recent cavalry release, we got Justinian and Huo, both of which were single target damage commanders. Previously, we got Jan Ziska, which was a single target and an AOE. 
and before that we got Bertrand and Nevsky both were single target and before that we got Yadviga which was single target and AoE so it seems to be the case for cavalry that every commander release cycle will have at least one of them being a single target commander and the other one alternating between single target and AoE and since our most recent cavalry release had two single target damage dealers then I think this upcoming release will have one single target damage dealer and one AOE damage dealer as far as the commanders go now this is not perfect this data doesn't hold up for the other troop types which is why I said it kind of falls apart a little bit um if we look at archers for example both Asher Bonapal and Herman Prime are AOE commanders prior to that Dito and Zhuye Liang was single target and AOE prior to that we had Henry and Boudicca which was single and single prior to that we had a Manatore and Gilgamesh which was single and single and then Nebu and Cyrus was single and AOE although I know Cyrus has some you know some AOE built into his kit but if we look at the infantry releases it kind of follows that same strategy as well because Gorgo and Liu Che was single target and AOE then Tarak and Sargon were both single target damage Flavius and CPO were single target and AOE and then Pakal and Chuk were both single target damage although again Chuck had some little bit of tiny AoE built into the kit there and then we had Zenobia and Harold which was a little bit different because you know Harold switches from single to AoE so the data doesn't fully go all the way back to 2020 but I think that it is a safe assumption that one of these commanders is going to be single target damage the other one is going to be an AoE damage dealer that is my best guess here based on the data okay and if you look back at the trends then typically the commander that is the single target damage dealer that never changes for cavalry and for infantry at least is always either the garrison or the rally commander right if we look back at the infantry and cavalry release cycles we'll see that for the infantry garrison it was single target for cavalry rally it was single target for infantry rally it was single target for cavalry garrison it was single target for infantry garrison it was circle tar single target for cavalry rally it was single target for infantry rally it was single target for cavalry garrison it was single target so based on that trend I think that the upcoming cavalry garrison commander is going to be a single target damage dealer right again this is based on the historical trends of what the developers have done this does not mean that that's what they're going to keep doing right past performance does not guarantee future results right I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that saying and since it seems very likely that the garrison commander single target and since it seems very likely that we will get a single target and an AOE commander well then by that logic the open field commander for cavalry is likely to be an AOE damage dealer okay so now we are getting somewhere so far all of these assumptions I think have a lot of historical data to suggest that it could be the case then the question becomes how much damage are these commanders going to deal and that's where things get really speculative okay this is where I'm just going to apply some some power creep logic to these commanders to give you guys my best assumptions okay if we can expect the upcoming Cav Garrison commander to be single target damage I expect their damage to be in the same ballpark as Justinian right Justinian is currently a 2500 single target damage dealer I think the highest possible damage factor of the expected cavalry garrison commander would be 2700 which is what we see from Huo okay I don't think we'll see anything higher than those numbers and of course I think it could be a little lower but I don't expect it to be that much lower and why is that well if we look at the previous cavalry garrison commander Jan Ziska he is not really used anymore I think he's been pretty much power crept out of the game I know some kingdoms use him for some things and you know maybe there's some uses for him that I'm not seeing but if we look at the damage factor from Jan Ziska, his expertise gives him 2400 to a single target. Then if this commander is less than 50% units remaining, you deal an additional 300 AOE, right? So I think that 2400, if it's going to be, if we, if the upcoming Cav Garrison is, is single target, I think 2400 is the floor because we're already seeing an instance where the previous Garrison does 2400 plus an extra 300 so 2700 now of course the damage dealt by the active skill isn't determined by just the number alone of course 
the active skills typically do other things these days for example justinian has like this massive wall of text here yanziska kind of the same thing right the expertise gives you bonus damage so really you know the damage factor of that active skill is going to depend on what else the active skill is doing you know if there is a powerful debuff there if there is some built-in like extra damage uh to the rally or something like that there's a lot of moving parts here and this is where like we're entering into the woods we're entering into the weeds i have no idea i'm shooting in the dark here okay but I think minimum damage factor is 2,500 high end of the damage factor is 27, maybe 2,800 with some bonus, you know, instant proc or conditional procs for damage, something like that. But what about the open field commander, right? If we expect that the wheel of fortune commander is going to be an open field AOE commander well what can we expect the damage factor to be from them the most recent open field aoe cavalry commander that we have is joan of our prime and her damage factor is 2000 to three targets with a nice little buff here for your allies and if we look back at a lot of different commanders recently a lot of aoe commanders have a 2000 damage factor and this actually even goes all the way back to guan yu right i think guan yu's power was pushed pretty far when he was first released of course that trend doesn't follow for a lot of the commanders that were here honda is a little bit of an outlier because his rage requirement is a little bit higher zhang is a little bit of an outlier because his rage requirement was lower but i think 2000 is kind of like the bare minimum but i think this upcoming cavalry release probably won't have a 2000 damage factor aoe unless we see two different things i think if it's a five target aoe then it's probably not going to be higher than 2000 if it's a three target aoe then it would only be 2000 if it did something else really powerful just like joan of arc prime right joan of arc has a little bit of a buff there she also has the double cast of her aoe which is insane then the question becomes is this new expected commander going to be a three target aoe or a five target aoe right well if we look back through history cavalry has never gotten a five target aoe in fact cavalry didn't even have an aoe commander until 2020 when they released william and it was that rectangle shape right so every single cavalry commander that has ever been released has been a three target aoe so i think it's likely that the expected cavalry commander for the open field if they're going to be aoe will probably be a three target aoe as well now if you look at some of the more recent commander releases that aren't cavalry then you're going to notice a trend of five target aoe right Heraclius was a five target AOE. We had Zhui Liang was five target. Liu Che is five target. Ashurbanipal is five target. Lapu Lapu is five target. Gonzalo was four target, but that's the only commander in the game with four target. So what I'm trying to say is recent history suggests a sort of trend towards five target AOEs, but I don't know. I think the jury is out here. I think it's a little bit more likely that this upcoming cavalry commander will be a three target AOE rather than a five target because if we look back right like Liu Che was the first time that infantry got a five target AoE besides that every other five target AoE in the game was either archers or leadership right with Heraclius being the first one there of course YSG being infamous for being the first ever five target commander but even going all the way back to the end of 2020 with Nebu that is five target and that's also Archer right so regardless my vibe is that it'll probably be a three target AoE I think the reason infantry got a five target was because that was the five year anniversary for Rise of Kingdoms with the release of Liu Che and also because infantry were in a really bad place when Liu Che first came out right like infantry needed someone super powerful I don't think cavalry is in a dire position right now Right now, I think Cavalry has two extremely good armies in the open field, that being Nevsky Joan and Ua William, right? So I don't think Cavalry needs a five target AOE. And so therefore, uh, based on historical trends and based on the current Cav meta, I think it will most likely be a three target AOE. So then it becomes a little bit tricky to figure out how much damage factor could this active skill do. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a little bit more power creep logic here. Okay. My assumption is that the developers are going to release this commander on the wheel of fortune and they're going to want this commander to be better than what we are currently using so what are we currently using we're using well from an aoe perspective we have joan of arc prime and we have william okay and of those two i think william is the weaker link now that's not to say william's a bad commander he's actually insanely good and he's lasted a really long time he's lasted almost four years in the meta which is insane so i think it's safe to assume that the expected aoe open field cav commander has to at least be better than william that is my assumption right otherwise players probably won't spin the wheel of fortune and 
honestly we're already going to see a wheel of fortune that players probably aren't going to be spinning for right i had this mislabeled here but i think gonzalo is probably not going to be a commander that players spin the wheel for a ton right and if we're being honest the wheel of fortune costs gems lilith is a business right and so i think that if they know that gonzalo is not going to get a lot of spins which i think they probably know that then they're probably going to put a pretty good commander on the cavil wheel that will get players to spin so how much damage factor does this new hypothetical commander have to do to be better than william well the thing about william is that he actually deals a lot of damage um he has a 1500 aoe to only three targets and that's not very good especially because it is a rectangle so the probability that you miss some targets is higher with william than it is with virtually any other commander except for maybe Mehmed, right but if you have him expertise he also has a 10 percent instant proc damage of up to 1500 okay so even if you only hit a single target with this if at some point during that that skill cycle you instant proc the 1500 then that's 3000 damage factor in that skill cycle now of course that is assuming that you get the maximum amount of stacks from the instant proc damage right but if we extrapolate that best possible case scenario for a two target aoe hit then you could expect about 4050 damage for that skill cycle and we could do the same thing for three targets and you would see approximately 4750 damage factor for a skill cycle where you hit your instant proc with the max troops surrounding and you hit your max three target aoe this is again napkin math very rough making assumptions whatever but by doing that we can kind of assume okay well first of all that's a lot of damage for such an old commander right that's actually kind of insane William has been so good for so long but we can use that damage factor to kind of figure out what the damage factor might be for this hypothetical new AoE commander right and since I think it's most likely that it's going to be a three target uh, AoE then I think the damage factor will be anywhere from 2100 to 2300 for a three target AoE that would be pretty powerful which if the damage factor is 2100 that would put the hypothetical max damage factor for hitting three targets at 4551 now I know that's a little bit lower than William but you have to keep in mind that this new commander could do some sort of buff or debuff on top of that and it could have a fan shape AoE it could have a half circle AoE now we've never seen a circular AoE on cavalry so I don't think we'll see a circle uh, AoE and also all the circles in the game are five target and I don't think he'll, they'll be five target so I think it's most likely that this commander will probably be a three target fan shaped AoE and that means it'll be more likely to get its maximum damage and also it won't rely on instant proc to get the maximum damage so it would make sense that this would be slightly lower than the max possible damage from William but also it doesn't have to be 2100 right we could change the number in the formula here to make it 2200 and all of a sudden now it's definitely going to be better than William every single skill cycle right so I mean hey it is what it is boys we could see the 2200 and honestly we saw 2250 from Liu Che so we could see 2250 for this new cavalry aoe i also want to be clear that this is assuming that each additional target reduces the damage by 15 percent which is kind of the trend we've seen that pretty often but again we're making assumptions of assumptions at this point i think 2000 would be the very minimum and that would assume that they would have a really powerful buffer debuff but i think anywhere from 2100 to 2300 is definitely possible the other thing that could influence this would be if it was a lower rage requirement right we saw that obviously with gorgo we saw that with huo we saw that with zhang yu we saw that with genghis khan right now we don't see that for every cavalry release and because the most recent cavalry release had it i think this cavalry release probably won't i think this commander will probably be a 1000 rage requirement commander again that is my assumption based on just game logic and understanding the game for the past five years so if the damage factor is on the lower end expect a good buff and debuff if it's on the higher end expect more of a vanilla damage factor but I do expect this upcoming Cav commander to be better than William now all of this data is based on the assumption that these will be skill damage commanders and guys it could be the case that we see a smite damage cavalry release if we see that then all of my logic in this video kind of goes out the window right i think it could follow the same trend or it could follow another attila takeda trend where we see something crazy done with normal and counter attack damage now we didn't see smite damage on the most recent release for the archer release but 
we could definitely see a smite damage cavalry commander in which case i have no idea if any of my predictions in this video are going to be true now the final thing that we're going to talk about in this video is who could these commanders be right and i don't really think there's that much historical data that we could use to guess this right it could be literally anyone we have a, a vast history of commanders to pick from we could use a little bit of logic to assume that it probably won't have the same civilization as the most recent release for example i think it's less likely that we see a chinese commander this release i think it's less likely that we see a german commander this this cap release right uh, just because we saw like herman and liu che recently also huo was also a chinese commander so i think we can sort of rule those things out maybe but again that's just my gut feeling that's just my vibe check I think that the developers kind of like to switch things up a little bit to give more variety to the commanders which I think is definitely true with Lapu Lapu Gajamata and Gonzalo for sure probably the most diverse release window we've had in a while but I'm just gonna throw some names out there for commanders that I think could be coming to rise of kingdoms and again this is not a leak this is not this is not insider knowledge this is literally just my best guesses okay I think King Arthur is very possible I think Odu Nobunaga is very possible I have Vlad the Impaler is on my wish list. William Wallace is definitely a commander a lot of people want. I think Hattori Hanzo is one that I've been asking for for a long time. I think a lot of players have been asking for King Baldwin the fourth of Jerusalem. That's the Leopard King with the silver mask. I think Hammurabi could be a, an interesting choice. I think Manko Kapak probably pronounced that wrong, but I think that is a famous Incan hero. I think that would be a very, very good choice to add, especially if we're getting Mayans released in the summer, which again is a is a guess that's not confirmed but I do think that the evidence points in that direction I know mines and Incans are different things but I think if we're looking at South and Central America maybe that could be a correlation there like it's adjacent there's also Siegfried the ancient German hero that I think is like known in mythology to have killed a dragon or something like that there's also King Louis the ninth of France I think that's very possible as well there's also King Tut as well King Tutankhamun from Egypt very famous Egyptian Pharaoh I think all of those commanders are possible some more likely than others a few commanders that I think are unlikely to come to rise of kingdoms literally ever I think we'll never see Gandhi I think we will never see George Washington I think we will never see Peter the Great from Russia why do I think that well if you come into your city hall here you can take a look and city hall 25 the highest city hall level is within the feudal age right so the feudal age ended between 15 and 1600 depending on when you know if you're looking at Europe or if you're looking at Japan for example I think in Japan it went to like 1600 now I haven't gone through all the commanders in the game but I think the year 1600 is probably about the cutoff for eligible historical figures that's my gut feeling I could be wrong there could be commanders in the game from after that time period I have no idea but if we're just going based on game logic you would assume that all commanders would be from 1600 or earlier which is why Peter the Great George Washington and Gandhi kind of don't really fit into that bucket and that is going to do it for the video this video was actually way longer than I thought it would be I thought this would be like a super quick thing but I ended up going down the rabbit hole and pulling together as much data as I possibly can so if you made it all the way to the end of this video and you appreciate all of the data that I pulled for this video please drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it'll help get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of Kingdoms players might see it and consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of Kingdoms video and comment down below your thoughts on my data analysis here do you think that I am on the right track and just as a quick recap of everything in this video I think the next release cycle will be cavalry I think it will come on May 7th of 2024 I think we're going to be getting one single target damage cav garrison and one aoe damage cav open field commander I think the garrison commander will deal between 2500 and 2700 damage to a single target I think the AOE commander will be a three target AOE with a damage factor of anywhere from 2100 to 2300. Guys, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.